Okay, so it's time for a little update. We have an empty slot in our lineup now because we sold the truck. Now I know we only made one or maybe two videos on the truck. I absolutely love the truck. It was great. What wasn't so great was the gas mileage that the truck got. So, with the market the way it was, I decided it was a great opportunity to sell it. And it actually went way faster than I thought it did. We sold the truck last Friday. So, with what we got from it, we took a $7,000 check and some more money in cash just to do what we had to do to make the deal to get the new car that's right here right now so yesterday we drove up north through all the fires because right now Montana is completely on fire and it's terrible actually the smoke's not too bad today but yesterday it was so thick you could taste it and we went up north and I picked up the new car and brought it back yesterday everything was fine except for about half the trip started getting a little wobble I think the alignment might be out that's okay we'll fix it we got it home so now I think you guys will be excited for this for what it is we're gonna work on now so without further ado let me introduce to you the new travel slash overland build also drop it down in the comments if you guys can think of what I went to did we go back to a first gen Xterra did we go to the second gen Xterra did we possibly go to a smaller truck and go to the frontier because I was thinking about that too go ahead drop it down below without cheating see give you a little hint right there it's blue so drop it down below and see if you guys can guess what we're gonna build next. Ooh. Do you guys guess it? Or are you completely blown away that I bought a Subaru? <laughs> so this right here is a 2010 Subaru Forester. Don't mind that, we're already working on changing something. But a 2010 Subaru Forester, 2.5X base model, but that. That right there was important. So it's base model, it's got some miles on it, 145,000 miles, but it's a manual. I did not want to mess with that CVT automatic transmission. I know a lot of you guys do it out there. But I wasn't ready to jump down that rabbit hole with doing extra coolers and making sure the temps stayed where they're supposed to be and all that garbage. Just easily bypassed it with a manual. Now, I have noticed that it is really gutless, especially compared to the Z, but completely different platforms. So it's to be a, as expected. But just from the three hours that I drove it yesterday, I absolutely fell in love with it. It's comfortable. It has plenty of headroom in it, which I was blown away. Just ridiculous headroom. Um, handles fairly nicely. We do have to switch this janky setup that was on it prior to the kit that I bought it from. But we'll get into that here in a minute. But yeah, mechanically, checks out almost solid. I do have to replace a third gear synchro. And I don't know if I want to maybe upgrade to a six speed or put just another train, like just put in another trans to the same one as in this one, or pull this one out and do new synchros, new clutch, new flywheel, and just rebuild it. So I'm not sure. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. So somebody put these on. They are a. Torin, I guess. I don't really know what this brand is. But they are 18 by 7 plus 40. And to pull these off, apparently 
I just found out when I pulled that one off that these are a 5x114 so I don't know if this is a common thing to do at least whoever did it but pairing spacers but they did a 5x100 to 5x114 conversion to put these wheels on which the direction we're going we're not even going to come close to this big and I want to stay with stock like 5x100 so these are going to go spacers got to come off so we're going to sell both of these make some money we've already ordered our new set of wheels so we just need to get those close so I can order tires but in the meantime uh -huh. we're going to run these So I did manage to come out with a set of the sock Subaru wheels that came with this car, which is a 16. So we're going to drop two sizes, run these bad boy winter tires here for about uh, three weeks until our new set of wheels and tires come in. This should hopefully make this handle a little bit better and then we will go ahead and sell these off too, probably. I'm gonna go ahead and get these unloaded, get these busted off, and get the new ones on, and then hopefully she'll ride a little bit better and we can continue diagnosing what it is we gotta replace with this thing suspension-wise before we order our lift kit for this because this is gonna get a full two-inch lift on 15s, on a 235 or a 215 75 15 wild peaks so what we're going to do with this give it a small lift aggressive wheels and tires and we've already got the mud flaps so we'll do skid plates and a couple other supporting mods and this is just going to turn into our snowboard car for the winter back and forth to work and hopefully I'm gonna start traveling some more. And you know what? It's hot, I'm tired. Just use a little bit of YouTube magic and get this done in three, two, one. Now, see, I didn't snap hard enough. Let's try this again. Three, two, there we go. Not quite as pretty, but much better. Rides much better than what was on there so so yeah so that's it for now we just swap the wheels over see if it rides a little bit better now we can start diagnosing what we need to replace as far as suspension wise see if any bushings are bad sounds like our struts are bad which is fine because we're going to replace our struts anyways and put in some springs some stiffer springs um somebody already put rally or rally armor sorry mud flaps on there so that's cool car's tinted so is the windshield. I don't know how I feel about that yet. We went through and took all the stickers off. Just trying to get this thing cleaned up. Diagnosed. See what it is we need to fix and replace to get it road worthy to start with. And then we are gonna dump into or jump into modifying this. But that's about all it came with. An extra set of wheels, window tent and mud flap so it was pretty much stock which is perfect to start throwing well, it had a basket rack but <coughs> I got rid of that before I even got home so that was nice and yeah I think that's it so let me know what you guys think I know it's not another Xterra like everybody likes but I've been seeing a big swing into mini off-roaders or soft overlanding whatever you want to call it and the more I looked into it, the more I was like, Subaru might not be that bad. You get great gas mileage. Even after you do a little lift, bigger wheels and tires, I've seen people still getting 26 miles to the gallon, which is great because the Xterra on a 
six inch lift on 35s. I want to say that thing ended up on 35s. 13 gallon or 13 miles to the gallon max and going uphill forget it i was thinking about supercharging it which would have killed the gas mileage even more so the truck six inches of lift again on 37s that thing only got 13 miles to the gallon too on the freeway so these little trips to go up to the mountain to snowboard and like wanting to go to zion and stuff just wasn't practical because just to go 100 miles down the freeway to go to Bozeman to snowboard was 150 bucks in gas and it was just killing me and making me not want to travel so I'm gonna try living that Subaru life now gonna have to buy a vape I guess maybe if that's how that works but I'm excited I'm hoping this gets me back on the trail I hope this gets me back to exploring and with the way the world's going right now we all need to do more of that so I hope you guys like it. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. So one more thing before I close out this video. I wasn't expecting for to do this full up front. Um, I was just expecting to do brakes and rotors, so I wasn't planning on filming it. But I did realize when I got the car back into town after buying it that I was having this weird issue that sounded like axle binding, but I couldn't quite figure out what it came from. I checked the axles and I couldn't really determine if the slop in them was normal or not because it didn't feel like an excessive amount of slop. And I checked the um, the U-joints and the drive line and things like that and just could not find anything. So I decided to go ahead and just replace both front axles. And thank God that's what it determined to be. I can't really show it because it's too dark, but um, it had just enough of like um, in and out play that in acceleration and decel um, I was getting like an axle bind so luckily we went ahead and just slopped in two new axles or CV axles from Napa um, to replace the front and that fully went away and then we did our brakes and our rotors and now this thing drives almost like it came from the factory so I think we're at a good point now that we got all the little stuff taken care of that we're going to start actually modifying this thing and lifting it. And just in time, what showed up today, give you guys a little sneak peek here. Oh, that's it. That's all you guys get. We got our springs and our struts in today. That's a little blown out. There we go. We got our springs and our struts in today. So. That's what we'll be working on next, why we wait for our lift to come in, and our wheels just got released from customs, and we just ordered tires, so we should be getting closer. All right, that's it for now. We'll see you guys next week.